After removing high voltage from the amplifier, we begin by disconnecting the collector cooling lines. The magnet cooling lines must be disconnected also. We then remove the knobs from the tuning adjusters on the cavities, this being so that the carriage will clear the cabinet when we roll it out. After removing the split centering plate, we inspect inside for any obvious water damage. At this time, the tuning cavities should be at their highest frequency position, that is, tuned so that the doors are all the way in. This corresponds to a clockwise direction on all four cavities. We then once again pull the tuners out. Begin disassembly of one side of the carriage so that we may disconnect the load coupler. There are six flange bolts in between the fourth and fifth coil that must be removed. It's helpful here to rotate the loading adjustment to the minimum loading position so that the loop will clear the opening in the cavity. We then lower the lifting frame And after a last visual check to make sure that there are no protruding tuners or other parts, we can lift out the klystron. The klystron and cavities attached will lift out, uh, leaving behind the five magnet coils inside the frame. The klystron itself weighs about 120 pounds. The four extra cavities bring the total up to about 250 pounds. We must make sure that all four of the lifting frame attachments are secure before we begin lifting. We then start very slowly, checking along the way for any part rubbing against the inside of the magnet coils or any other signs of stress. The large hole there at the lower cavity is where the output coupling loop is attached. The red cylinder at the bottom is the water jacket around the collector. There may be a little bit of water in the tube at this time, and you'll just have to let it drip out. We place the klystron and cavities on a suitable mount so that we can begin disassembly. The tuning doors on opposite sides of each cavity are connected by a spring-loaded shaft. We merely compress those to move it, loosen the Allen head screws connecting the cavities together 
and remove the cavities one by one. A little spreading of the brass bars supporting the assembly is helpful here to clear the halves of the cavity. We place aside the first cavity, uh, being sure to number all parts that we take apart so that they may be assembled exactly as they were disassembled. On some klystrons, the third and fourth ceramics will look purple. This is a normal condition. Upon taking apart the output cavity, this particular tube shows some signs of arcing. We then disattach the two brass horizontal members, which were attached to the lifting members. And we remove this carcass tube. We will set it aside and ship it back to the manufacturer for return credit. When carrying these tubes, be sure that they are supported at at least three points to avoid stress. Looking down inside the empty magnetic frame, we note some signs of water damage on the fifth coil at this time. We can have someone clean these up and re-varnish them if necessary. We unbox the new klystron, attach the two horizontal members, and begin reassembly starting with the fourth cavity. Here we make certain all cavities are aligned parallel with respect to one another. This is an easier task if we have done our numbering job during disassembly. Here we are at the first cavity. The first cavity on this particular transmitter has two input ports, both of which are connected to load couplers. The second and third cavities have two input ports apiece. Those are merely covered with a cover plate. The fourth cavity has the big load coupler, which uh, must be put in after the assembly is back in the frame. We then roll the frame over, which uh, at this time has been cleaned and some of the coils revarnished. Gently crank up the klystron into the air. Once the frame is positioned directly underneath the assembly, we may lower it very gently until it is seated at the bottom of the frame. There is an index pin on the water jacket and a index cutout in the bottom of the frame for alignment. Once the tube and cavities are seated, we disconnect the lifting frame and we reattach the output load coupler. We reinstall the split centering plates exactly as they were taken off. The large round plates are fixed to the frame. The smaller square plates slide around on the large round one. This allows us to center the magnetic field and adjust for minimum body current.
We reattach the adjusters for the square centering plates. And we return the klystron to the amplifier cabinet. At this time, we should have made sure that the output load coupler is adjusted for 100% coupling. That is, the loop in the full vertical position. After rolling the klystron carriage into the cabinet, we reattach the water lines, the filament leads, and the focus coil leads. We must make sure that the collector of the klystron is properly grounded. We reset all the tuning doors to the positions that they occupied before disassembly. After reattaching the high voltage leads, making sure everything is shipshape, we can then begin the tune-up procedure.